I'm going to be honest with you. People fall into two different schools of thought with taking care of their tools. The first school of thought says they just don't do it. Screw it. They're just going to let it ruin. They don't care about it. The other group of people way overthink it. Obviously, it's better to overthink it than it is to just not do it. But this is how I do it. It's probably not the best way. There's probably a whole bunch that are better. Let's take boiled linseed oil. I do wear gloves with this stuff. Supposedly, there's some chemicals in here that might hurt you. And I try to do it over my stump, to be honest with you. That way, anything that drips will drip down onto my stump. Just my hacking stock. This is what I work off of What I, if I'm playing around making something, you know, carving or whatever. This is what I use. And it keeps it off the driveway as well. Just give it a good coat. I mean, nothing really thick, not overly thick. Instead of decide, let it dry for the day. Move on to the next tool. This saw and this draw knife, they both belong to family members of mine, so they mean a lot to me. Nothing special about it, just an old saw that belonged to my great-grandfather. Got a little bit of oil on my hand, so I'll go ahead and rub that in. But if you look, whenever I got it, it was broken. So I made a little repair right there. I just cut that out of pine, piece of pine that I had. Not the greatest, not, it's not perfect, but it is working. Give that thing a real good coat. This is what caused it to crack out and needed to be repaired in the first place. And I just give it as much as it'll drink. Keep going until it doesn't want any more oil. It's nice to do all this at the same time because I'll be honest, linseed oil, well, it can get kind of expensive. And I don't know, I always feel like I'm wasting it if I don't use it until it's, you know, the, the oily rag or whatever's on my hands is gone. And I'll just go through and give each and every one of them a good coat. I'll even come up here on the metal a little bit. Set these aside one by one to dry. On your garden equipment, you want to make sure and get the junction where the handle meets the head. One other thing to remember, let's see if we can get this to show up on camera. Here we go. And I have this on selfie mode, so it may come out backwards, I don't know. Be sure and buy your, your garden equipment to be forged from a single piece of steel. If you see how this is all forged, this is an older hoe, this is an antique hoe. I have several of these. It's got dual pins, which are basically just nails, that hold in the head. They're built a lot better, and they're just made to last. And take your time. This, isn't, this is a handle that came off of a rake that I found at a yard sale. The rake was junk, total junk, but I gave a dollar for it and the handle was worth a dollar. Whenever I got this hoe, it didn't have a handle on it. So I, I feel like I got a good deal. And I like to take, even if it's an inexpensive tool, I take time and I spend time on the handles and I make them the way I like them. I sand every one of them down. I take the varnish off and I oil them. And whenever you spend time and energy on something, you tend to take better care of it. So that's part of what I do with your shovels. And be sure and dribble some down in here on the end grain. Let it soak in there really good. And I always take, after I get them cleaned up, get all the dirt off of them, I always paint these also. Scrub them up really good and paint them. It just helps them a little bit in the weather. Put a little bit of this on my hands here. Like I said, the, all of my overspill, it falls on my stump, and it's not gonna hurt it one bit. Boiled linseed oil, I like it specifically. Oh, tore my glove there. I like boiled linseed oil 
After it's had time to polymerize, it kind of basically turns into a plastic type material. And it provides a great grip. It's not sticky. It's not slippery. It's perfect. You know, these old bit braces. I can go out and buy me a new hoe that'll be sufficient. But these bit braces, and these antique tools, once these handles crack and break, they're gone. They, they're gone, they're not coming back. So I take extra care of them. And I oiled this one not too long ago, so it's, it's pretty good to go as it is. I don't know of a chemical out there that provides as good of a grip that's not sticky, it's not gummy, it's just a really good feeling grip that you get from this boiled linseed oil. And after you've had some use on it, it gets polished, it gets this beautiful patina, beautiful deep brown patina. It's just wonderful to work with. That's how you get these, you see those old hickory, of course this is probably walnut or something on this draw knife. But eventually, after enough use, this handle will start looking just like that. It'll be beautiful. And I'm actually going to leave this axe stand right here to dry. You know, people get loose heads on their, on their tools, their sledgehammers and, and things of that sort. And they'll say, well, put it in a bucket of water. That'll, that'll help it. And it will. It'll tighten it up. But it'll crush the cells in the wood. And then the water will leave. And you're worse off than you were when you started. Boiled linseed oil will crush those cells also. The difference is the boiled linseed oil doesn't leave, doesn't evaporate, it stays put. The end grain is where all these tools absorb. That's where most of the absorption happens. One other thing we need to do is give all of our metal tools a coat of oil. I use motor oil. It works just fine. You can get you can geek out on this stuff. If it's might be used in food production, I'd probably use mineral oil or something like that. But just wipe everything down really well. Keep this stuff maintained. And like I said, there is an aspect of take care of these tools and put time into them. Make it part of your normal routine. And you'd be surprised how much better you'll take care of them. I'm not the greatest at it, and I, sometimes I need to listen to my own teaching. But I, I do try to do my best. Especially things like these old, old antique tools. Especially if it's a family heirloom like this here. And I'll show you what I'm doing. Down here inside the mechanism, we got to keep this working good and free because this is a ratcheting bit and brace. Parts for these are extremely hard to find. Well, I say that. They're not incredibly hard to find. But they are expensive, and I don't want to have to buy new parts. I want to keep the ones I got. So what we'll do, I want to dip the screwdriver and just dribble a drop of oil in here and there. Gun grease works good for this too. I'm just going to use motor oil. Just a drop every now and then is all you really need. If you put too much oil on it, it'll get to where it wants to collect dirt real bad. And then you'll, I don't know what's worse, trying to get all that dirt out or just trying to uh, remove rust. Cause that dirt will mess it up too. It'll gall it out, gall it out real bad. There, we're just gonna work that oil in there. Let's give it another couple drops. Work it in there on that pawl. You'll want that to ratchet once you, about the time you get in a corner. Uh-oh. 
turn it. Turn it here. There we go. Yeah. That's a little bit more like it. We'll also oil this in right here too. There's a little bit of, you know, elitism, I guess. About, uh, I got some sap stuck on that. Draw a knife. A little bit of elitism on the type of oil you should use, but I, I don't buy into all that. I, I just put what I've got, and I've been doing it for a long time, and people have been just using deer tallow and stuff like that for hundreds of years, and nobody had any problems before there was an internet to look it up on. So if this wasn't royal purple, I would have settled for any other oil that I had in the house at all. I'm gonna give this about an hour or so, and then I'll just come through and give them a wipe. Wipe off everything that hasn't absorbed. It's been a while on these. There's been a few cuts and stuff in this video, so I can go ahead and give them that wipe now. The reason being is uh, this linseed oil dries by oxidation. <laughs> And if there's a big old huge thick layer and it already starts oxidizing, that's not going to soak in and just take longer to dry. So I'll do this and then maybe next week or later on this week, I'll give all this stuff another coat. I'm going to stick that one in there pretty good so it didn't come out. Well, all right. Uh, let me know what y'all do with y'all's tools. What do y'all like to do? How do y'all maintain them? Um, how often do you do it? I do it, like I said, every September, and then just whenever I think about it. You know, if I, if I think about doing it and I've got time, I go ahead and I, I give everything a, a little bit of maintenance. After all this is dry, I'm gonna sharpen everything. I'm gonna bring all my saws out here. I'm gonna file my saws. I'm gonna, my, my saws that are actually decent saws, the, the newer ones you can't sharpen. Uh, my planes, spoke shaves, axes, all of these homesteading, gardening, get work done type of tools. Well, all right, well, uh, be sure and hit, a, hit the like button, subscribe, and leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And until next time, be safe.